All right, so the next session is on rate increase conversations and the rate increase process. With what's going on in the insurance industry right now, this training is so, so, so important. A lot of people, a lot of agents are very emotional people. The problem is, as long as rates are good, everything is wonderful. But now rates are going up. People or are, are, are carriers are tightening up on their guidelines. People are getting 20, 30, 40 percent rate increases. And we forget how to have that conversation. So first, I'm going to come from the standpoint of the carrier, because I think this is important. Guys, we do not write the policies. We don't underwrite the policies. It is not our money at risk. Yes, it's maybe our commission which is a portion of the money, but we're not the run, the ones that have to write the $500,000 check or the $10,000 check. We don't do that. The carriers do that. And the carriers have things that they have to do. They have to maintain some type of cushion. They got to make sure that they're answering to their shareholders. They got to make sure that they're answering to their members if they're a mutual company. They have to make sure that they are running a profitable business. They got to make sure they can pay all their claims. They got to make sure they can pay everybody. So how do you do that if you're writing bad business? We as agents are a big reason behind this hard market. We as agents. Why? Because we're so concerned with writing that customer that we forget we are the field underwriter for the carrier. The carrier trusts us to make sure that we're writing good business. The carrier gives us binding authority, which means we speak on behalf of the carrier. So that means if I'm with whatever carrier I'm with, that carrier says, Billy, I trust that you're not going to write bad business. I trust that you're not, you're not going to write high risk. I trust that you're not going to lie just to get a policy issued. I trust that you're actually going to field underwrite some of this stuff on behalf of the carrier, on behalf of me, so that we can all be profitable. Because if I have a bad loss run, I'm not profitable. I'm not going to get paid a lot of money if I put bad, bad business on the books. The older agents, when I say older, I'm talking 20, 25, 30 year old, you know, 30 year agents that have been around, they grew up under that mindset of we are the field underwriters for the carrier. The younger agents, the ones that have been around the last four or five, six years, we just want to throw as much much business on the books as possible so that we can get commission. What's happened is a lot of agents have thrown bad business on the books, high risk, haven't really been rated properly because we've been lying. There's been a young driver in the house and we never mentioned it. You know, uh, they got a swimming pool. And we never mentioned it. That's why they send out drones and all this other stuff to verify stuff. We lied about the square footage so we get the price down. So we are we are we are party to this. We're culpable, right? We are we are party to all this. And now what's happened is the carriers, when you mix in all the other stuff that goes on, which I want to talk about the seven reasons rates go up, you mix in all the other stuff, fraud, claims, bad weather events, catastrophic events, catastrophes. You mentioned, I mean, you throw in all this other stuff on top of all this, and then we wonder why rates are going up. And here's what's so sad. We're not even accepting any of the responsibility for it mentally, emotionally, but also we're trying to avoid the conversation because we're, we're either not equipped, we're not trained to deal with the conversation, or we were never, we're not emotionally strong enough to deal with the conversation. So we stick our head in the sand and we hope that it goes away. We hope the customer just either shops and goes and finds someone else so that we can complain and whine and cry about how we're losing all of our customers, or they just accept the rate increase and move on. No. That's not the way it should be. So first and foremost, that was me from the carrier standpoint. Now let's talk about staff. We're going to come back from the staffing standpoint. If we don't train our staff on the five ways that we can modify our customer's insurance rate, then we're doing a disservice to our staff. We're just throwing them under the bus without, giving, without equipping them with the tools they need to deal with this. So they're getting beat up and we're, we're out playing golf. We're doing everything else. We're letting the staff deal with that mess, but we never trained them to deal with it. So staff, there are five ways you can modify your customer's insurance rate, four if you're captive, but there are five ways you can modify your insurance rates, insurance customers rate. And this is it. Like we, we don't have a lot of other wiggle room. Yeah, I know you can ask for credits and all that other stuff. I don't, I didn't even list that on here because that's a, a 
That's a rare situation. But these are five everyday things we can do. Number one, verify and update the information used to rate the policy, whether that's the VIN number, the square footage of the home, the current employees. Our job is to get the accurate information so that we can get the correct rate. That's why we never say, oh, see if I can find you a cheaper rate. We always say to see if I can find you the most accurate rate for your situation. Because guess what? The rate may not be cheaper. That's not my goal. My goal is not to find you the cheapest insurance. My goal is to offer the coverage that will best protect your quality of life should you ever have to file a claim. Your job is to decide, you the customer, your job is to decide what do I want to pay for. But if I don't do my job well, if I don't explain the consequences, if I don't explain what information I need, if I don't update the information correctly in the systems, then you can't make a decision on what you should pay for. You're running down the streets of some no licensee or no problema place right, to get insurance because I never explain what's going to happen to you in a claim. I never explained the consequences. I never said, look, this is what you need to be aware of. These are the weaknesses that are on your policy. I was just, well, that's the best I can do. That's the best price I can come up with. Well, I'm going to go shop and find a better price. I understand they're going crazy with these prices. Really? We're apologizing for what we do as a profession. Are you kidding me? No. Our job is to offer the coverage that best protects your quality of life should you ever have to file a claim. Your job, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, is to take the information that I'm giving you, explaining the consequences, explaining the value, and then you decide what you want to pay for. There may be coverages that you feel like are unimportant. Great. We'll remove them. But you're going to sign something saying you understand it's not our standards. So number one, verify and update the information used to rate the policy, VIN number, square footage, all that. Number two, verify the customer has all of the discounts they're qualified to receive. Now, this is this is one of those ones where people go, what do you mean qualified to receive? Well, because guess what? There may be discounts that fell off. Maybe I wrote your home and your home was seven years old. So you got a, a, a discount because your home was new. Or maybe your roof, you just replaced your roof five years ago. So you got a roof discount, but that discount starts to fall off every single year. Maybe I did a future effective. This is what the captives do. They write a future effective policy and they give you a discount for committing to coming with us early. But that discount only lasts one renewal and then it's gone. Maybe you got a discount for good, good student. Now your student has a C, doesn't have a B average. So that's why we always say verify the customer has all of the discounts they're qualified to receive because there are probably a lot of discounts that they could get, but because we're not doing good policy reviews, we're not getting that information. Number three, check to see if there's coverage that the customer wants to lower or completely get rid of because they might not need or want the coverage. But before we get rid of any coverage, we're going to explain the consequences. This is why we use templates. These are the coverage consequences. The customer says, oh, I got health insurance. I don't need $10,000 in medical coverage. Well, here's the difference. Health insurance has limitations. It has restrictions. Health insurance may say, I won't pay for an MRI, but I will pay for an X-ray. It may charge you $75 for an aspirin. It may do whatever. And there just may be situations where health insurance denies the claim. No, we're not paying for that. You got to pay that out of pocket. Well, if this was involved in a covered accident or a covered situation, we don't have those restrictions. We're going to pay $10,000 out regardless of fault if it's a medical claim, medical claim. Or if it's PIP, we're going to pay whatever we're supposed to pay for PIP. So while health insurance is awesome, we can cover a lot of the gaps. What is your health insurance deductible? Oh, it's 13000 if you're in a health insurance situation and you got a deductible of 13,000, your health insurance doesn't even kick in until you're 13,000 and one. But if this was a covered claim, if you're in a car accident, we start paying dollar one. So that means we can pay 10,000 of that 13,000 deductible because you're in a covered accident. Or maybe your health insurance deductible is 2,000. Well, we can cover that 2,000. Do you have coinsurance? Yeah, I got 80-20. So what that means is while you have a $13,000 deductible, that doesn't mean that's your max out of pocket. You still may have more money that you pay out of pocket because you have an 80-20 
copayment. If this was a covered claim, we could petition to get that 20% that you're paying covered through your medical payments or covered through your PIP. So just because you have health insurance does not mean health insurance is gonna take care of everything. Another thing, health insurance is health insurance. But what happens if you got a piece of glass in your eye? Well, that may not fall under your health insurance. That may fall under vision. Do you have vision as part of your health? I don't know. But see, for us, it's a covered claim. So we don't care if it's vision, dental, if you get your teeth knocked out, we don't care. We're going to pay up to the limits of what our coverage says in a covered claim for any medical situation. I've seen situations where we go, uh, a health insurance company, like I said, will say, we're not going to pay for an MRI, but we will pay for an x-ray. But your doctor says you need an MRI. Well, guess what? We still have money left under our medical payment. So therefore, we petition to our medical claims department that says, we want to we want to take that difference and use it to pay for an MRI versus an x-ray because our health insurance denied it. So again, guys, you have to know your coverages. And this is why we wrote out all your consequences for you. If you go to module two and module three, you'll see we wrote all your consequences for your primary coverages. We wrote them out for you. If you go to commercial, just type in commercial, uh, you'll see that we actually put the coverages, the primary coverages that are out there that go with commercial insurance. Melissa did a bunch of research and got all that together for all the different coverages. So if you just type in commercial in the video library and you'll see the commercial coverage form, very comprehensive. But if you don't know the consequences, if you can't explain any of this stuff, then it won't work. So check to see if there's coverage the customer wants to lower completely get rid of. And if they do get rid of something that's below the standard, that's when you use your decline coverage form. Number four, adjust deductibles. But I put a warning. Warning, increasing deductibles could force the customer to pay more money out of pocket at the time of a claim than the actual amount of money you saved them by raising the deductible. I've seen these deductibles. Oh, God, it was a guy the other day. I was looking at a, a policy. The guy had a legacy policy. This was a commercial policy. He had a legacy policy that had a wind and hail deductible of $500. $500. This is on a commercial policy, right, for his building property. $500. He was written into a new policy that had a wind and hail deductible of 2% on a $700,000 building. Did he save some money? Absolutely. Now, this was a friend of mine. This is why I was able to see this because he was asking me about it. I said, so you save $1,500, but you put yourself... $14,000 or whatever it was, you put yourself at risk because 2% of $700,000 is $14,000. So you saved $1,500 to put yourself $14,000 at risk. That doesn't make sense to me. Well, the agent never explained it to me that way. That's why you came and asked your buddy. And that's why I was able to explain it to you. Now, it's not going to stop me from kicking your butt on the golf course. I'm, you know, I feel a little sorry for you, but you're still going to get your butt kicked on the golf course by me. But at least you know now that every change is not a good change just because you're saving a little bit of money. That's why I have to stress to people, even during these hard times with rates going up 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 percent. That's not our job, guys. We're not the carrier. Our job is to offer the coverage that best protects our customers quality of life should they ever have to file a claim. Their job is to decide what they want to pay for after we have explained the consequences of their decision. And then finally, number five, remarket the policy. Here's the deal. We follow this order. We don't go two and then four and then three and then no, we follow this order. I'm going to verify the information. So if I'm talking to a customer, they go, oh, my policy went up 30 percent. What can you guys do? Well, look, there are five things that I can do to help see if we've got the best rate that we can offer for you. First, I'm going to verify all the information that I use to rate the policy. So when I send it to the carrier, I know everything is accurate. Second, I'm going to see if there are discounts that you're qualified to receive that may not be there. Third, I'm going to check to see if there's coverage that you might want to lower or get rid of after you understand the consequences of changing that coverage. Fourth, I'll adjust your deductibles and see if that makes any kind of difference or if it's in your, it's in your best interest for us to raise those those deductibles. And then finally, I'm going to remarket. 
I got multiple carriers. I'm independent. I'll go out and see what carriers I can find that will give you equal or better coverage at a lower price and see if that's an option. Those are the five things that I can do. Are you comfortable with me doing those five things for you? Absolutely. Great. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's verify the information. Guys, that's what your staff can do. Staff, you don't need to get emotional. You don't need to get upset. You don't need to be bothered. You don't need to feel run and hide, stick your head in the sand. These are the five things you can do, and you just need to learn to do them. Now, customers are like, why are rates going up? Why are, why are things going up so badly? Well, there are seven reasons that rates go up. There are seven major reasons that rates increase. Number one, other people's actions that drive up insurance for everybody. As you know, the reason why your price is what it is, is because you're sharing in this insurance with everybody else. So when everybody else starts doing stupid stuff, it makes everybody's rates go up. Well, I haven't had a claim. I haven't had this. Where well, you're one of the people that's keeping the rates lower. Imagine if you did have a bunch of claims. Imagine if you did have a bunch of accidents. Imagine if you were cheating and lying and doing all that. The rates would be even higher. So thank goodness we you're one of the good guys. You're one of the good gals that's keeping the rates lower than what they would be if everybody was lying and cheating. Fraud. Fraud is the number one thing that drives rates. Fraud can be anything from people faking an accident to using insurance for maintenance. You, you knew that roof only needed about seven shingles, but you, the roofer came by and told you, I can get you a whole new roof with an insurance claim. So you were like, yeah, let's do it. So now you file a claim. Yeah, you get a whole new roof, but you just lied. You just defrauded the carrier. Now the carrier has a bigger out-of-pocket because all these people are going around getting new roofs instead of just getting their roof repaired. Because what does a roofer do? Their job is to sell a new roof, not to repair a couple of shingles. So that's fraud. To everything from doctors to unnecessary lawsuits, all these different things that are going on, hit and runs, things that people are doing to drive up rates. The ones that don't have claims, don't have tickets, don't have accidents, they're helping to keep the rate lower. The ones that are doing all this other stuff are the ones that are helping to drive it up. But unfortunately, you're all in one pot. So your actions are pulling in the good. Their actions are pulling in the bad. Your insurance history, now this is specific to you, your claims, your years of prior insurance. So if you came from a low, no licensee or no problema insurance company that didn't report, we don't know if you actually had claims. It's, a, it's like credit. We don't know if you got bad credit because of something serious or you got bad credit simply because you're irresponsible. We don't know. All we know is you got bad credit. So it's the same thing here. If you came from a really weak, low type of insurance carrier that we can't verify any information, we're going to assume you're average, and therefore you're going to pay average rates, not best rates. Personal credit, discounts you qualify to receive. Those are, those are the second things that drive rates, your specific rate. Third, the coverage. The cost to repair or replace whatever you're insuring has gone up. So how is it that the car dealerships, their prices have gone up, the repair shops, their prices have gone up. The parts department, their prices have gone up. The people who clean your car, their prices have gone up. Everybody's prices have gone up that the insurance company depends on, but we're not supposed to take rate? That doesn't even make sense. Well, yeah, your rate went up because everything associated with insurance went up. More fraud, more uninsured drivers, more random lawsuits. The fact that you haven't had a claim means you're helping to keep that rate lower. But you also have a $70,000 car. And so the price to replace that $70,000 has gone up. Everyone who works on that car has increased their price. So as a carrier, we got to be able to pay our claims, pay our people, pay our responsibilities. And the only way we can do that is by having enough money in the kitty. So when those claims, responsibilities, and all those fall in place, we're not running out of the state. It's not like a Louisiana situation where suddenly we're losing eight, nine, ten carriers. Or Florida situation where carriers stop writing or California situation where you can't even get insurance hardly because all the carriers stop writing or they put a moratorium. We don't want that. And the only way we're going to not have that for you is we got to make sure we got enough money in the kitty. Number four, insurance carrier actions, our cash reserves. The, look again, like I said, the fact that we got to pay our people, we got to pay our claims and we got to pay our responsibilities and we got to have and we got to have a cushion. Number five, industries that insurance companies depend on. 
like I said, the cost of labor, lumber materials, all those things go up. The the people who work on your vehicles, the people who repair your your stuff. And if it's an insurance claim, it's naturally going to get charged more money. So my daughter tore her ACL playing volleyball. She needed an MRI. I went to the MRI place and I said, hey, how much is this if I pay it myself out of pocket? They said $480. I said, if you put it through insurance, how much is it? $2,800. Guys, I'm not making these numbers up. These were the actual real numbers. I said, let me get this straight. If I paid for this out of pocket, I pay $480. But if you put this through Blue Cross Blue Shield, you're going to charge them $2,800. And now everybody wonders why insurance rates go up. Well, why are the, why are the doctors doing it? Because Blue Cross Blue Shield is going to try to nickel and dime them down and say, no, we don't want to pay $2,800. We'll pay you $1,100. And the doctors are saying, no, we need this money. So everybody's lying and cheating on everybody. The doctors are lying. The procedure places are lying. The insurance companies are lying. Customers are lying. Everybody's lying and cheating each other and then complaining about them being cheated. That's just reality. Government regulations. Frank Dodd, because of what happened in 2008, says insurance companies, you have to have all these cash reserves. So how do I get those cash reserves? I got to make sure I got enough premium. I'm hoping that my profits will be good enough that I can distribute back to my shareholders or give a dividend back to my members like a state farm. But at the end of the day, I still have to have so much money in reserve. And then finally, profitability. If I'm not profitable, I'm not a good business, which means I am going to put a moratorium, which means I am going to stop writing, which means I am going to come up with these crazy guidelines, which means I am going to you know, increase prices ridiculously so as much as 80, 90, 100% just so I can try to get my profits up. These are the seven variables that drive insurance rates. If you truly want to be a professional, Yep, this is me calling you out. If you truly want to be a professional and truly want to be good at what you're doing, study these variables. Know the five things that you can do to help influence your customers' rates because this is it. This is all you can do. Yeah, I get it. There are some credits and other stuff out there you can ask for. Okay, but these are the five primary things you can do. And then know the seven reasons. Does that mean that's going to make a customer happy because you can explain it? No, but at least it's in your tool bag. At least you can explain it in a way that makes you feel good about your job, that makes you feel good about, I told you, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, what you do with that is completely up to you. But at least I was able to tell you what we're doing. All right, guys, that's the rate increase conversation. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down, and I'll see you on the next session, which is our biggest section, one of our longer sessions, where we talk about the retention process. Because I've walked you through this whole process. I've taught you how to do leads how to do lead follow-up i've taught you how to how to close the sale i've taught you how to bring on a brand new customer i taught you how to process the endorsement i've taught you how to explain when rates go up and what's going on in our hard market right now and now i'm going to teach you how to retain that customer guys I, i don't know what else i can do but help you to grow your agency by giving you all of these steps okay i'll see you in a few minutes guys talk to you bye bye